I've seen many different birds nesting over the years, from American robins to birds of prey to shorebirds. But observing cavity nesters like woodpeckers, nuthatches, and chickadees are the most intriguing, albeit irritating, to watch. That's due to the fact that they come to their tree and enter inside, leaving one to wonder, what's going on in there? It sure would be nice to see, but that's all you get. However, there is a way. Two years ago, a friend who builds wonderful nest boxes sent us one with a camera inside, giving the ability to watch what was going on. Some of you are probably familiar with them on YouTube as birds walking down. We wasted no time setting everything up. Filbert, a male black hat chickadee, and his very timid mate Phoebe took a strong interest in the box, coming to check it out daily for a couple of weeks. Knowing the wild birds in my area the way I do makes it a little more personal. In the box we had wood shavings about one third of the way up. Wood shavings are appealing to chickadees and other cavity nesters, since in the wild they dig out their own cavities in a dead part of a tree, removing the bits of wood along the way so this makes things feel natural to them, satisfying their instinctual ways. Over the course of a few days, the pair spend a lot of time taking out some of the shavings. The sweetest thing was watching Filbert giving Phoebe little food offerings. Many times I couldn't make out what he was giving her as it was very tiny, made it look like they were kissing. The most exciting was when Phoebe returned to the nest with some moss the next day. Now it was looking like things were getting serious. I've seen once before a female chickadee I named Marxine collecting moss for nesting. They really stuff their little bills with as much as they can hold. Filbert helped out too, but it was mostly Phoebe, and they sure collected quite a lot once it was all said and done. This is the foundation to which the nest is built on top of. Finally, one night, Phoebe stayed in the box her sweet little head tucked into her back, creating an overwhelmingly heartwarming feeling inside of me. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. By nearly a week later, Phoebe brought back some fur to make a warm place to lay her eggs in. The fur was likely taken from a snowshoe hare carcass. Not only did the snowshoe hare provide life to the hawk that hunted it, but also the bedding for another species to raise young in. Before the nest was even completed, Phoebe already laid one egg, but no other ones for a few more days. When having to leave the box, she would cover the egg with fur to keep its temperature stable, but did not begin incubation until all the eggs were laid. In this case, six precious little oval structures containing all the ingredients required to grow new chickadees. Up until this point, I had never seen what a chickadee nest looked like. It was like nothing I had seen before. Just absolutely beautiful, so soft with a cozy, warm feeling. Over the coming days, Filbert brought Phoebe food while she kept the eggs warm. She would fix up her nest, and other times she'd look out the hole. Being inside for hours must be a little boring. That is, until someone else shows up and tries getting in. She was using what's known as the snake display for obvious reasons. To see Phoebe in action like that defending her home and babies all alone was unnerving. A while later it happened again. Watching birds like this means you don't know what you're going to see, and I definitely didn't want to observe something bad happen. Luckily, the intruder lost interest and never came back. Then a few days later, the fun began. Being the wonderful fathers chickadees are, Filbert wasted no time coming with some food. He even stayed to see how things were going. Seeing him behind Phoebe as he watched her was adorable. Breaking through the shell is an arduous task for the little ones. The process can take a good portion of the day. One egg was behind many hours though, going into the next day before hatching. 
Filbert's big role now turned toward hunting for enough insects to bring back to his six hungry babies. Making multiple trips in each hour of the day from dawn until dusk. One day while bringing home food, Filbert must have been followed by something. He hid in the back and Phoebe immediately took charge. Getting a glimpse into this part of their world uncovers just how devoted and hardworking these little birds are. I can't help but to admire their bravery when faced with such life-threatening challenges. Due to other birds and animals like squirrels, it's a good idea to add a steel guard to the entrance hole. This will keep them from chewing through or destroying it. At the time, though, I never had one. However, the extended hole guard offered additional protection. When providing birds with a nest box, it's important to give them the best possible experience. But of course, some things are out of our control. When they aren't fending off intruders, things inside the nest box are much more peaceful. It's fascinating to watch how much the young grow in a short period, just a few weeks. Fully feathered and with those namesake caps, the cup became a tight space, barely capable of fitting all six in. Hearing Filbert making his faint Phoebe song when arriving back to the box with a beak full of grub always got the babies going. How vocal they were using that cute begging D call almost constantly. Between bringing food, diaper runs, and cleaning the cup, Phoebe and Filbert had their work cut out for them. In the last few days of their time inside the box, the youngsters were getting pretty active, moving around a lot and flapping their wings. Finally, one brave baby looked out of the hole must be so intimidating when all they've known is this tight little spot. The whole nesting experience was riddled with all kinds of touching moments, and nearing the time of fledging was one such moment. Filbert would be heard close by making his faint Phoebe song as well as the gargle call, his way of encouraging the nestlings to take their next big step in life, leave the nest. Some nestlings were quick to go, while others were more cautious. The last nestling must have been the one that took the longest to hatch from its egg. The little guy was in no hurry to leave, it seemed. Pecking on the wood was far more interesting. Filbert came back to check on things and almost seemed to bribe the nestling with food, showing the little one what he had but leaving with the meal. Even gave him a little slap with his tail. Certainly snapped the little guy out of it. How sweet that it looked back one last time before leaving. To our surprise, while the fledglings were getting familiar with life outside the nest, Phoebe was getting ready for another clutch. Normally, chickadees raise just one brood in a season, but in some years when the insect population is great, they will try for a second one. In total, she laid four eggs, and remarkably, Filbert managed to not only feed and care for the young, but also bring food back to Phoebe at the nest. Sadly, the second clutch was not a success. We aren't sure what happened, but all the nestlings died. It could have been the heat wave we were experiencing or some parasite, we aren't really sure. But it really brought to light what these birds have to overcome in order to successfully raise healthy babies. I am so grateful that their first clutch was a success, otherwise it would have been a complete loss. The fact that Filbert and Phoebe managed to do all that was needed to fledge the first brood is a testament to their unwavering hard work and commitment. 
over the coming weeks when I'd see the parents, I'd also see all six of the little ones. They were still going strong. I'm sad to say, though, that Phoebe is no longer with us. The last time I saw her was in early March of 2022. I've not seen her since, and Philbert eventually moved on, with his current mate being Inky. I really miss Phoebe, so here's to her and the wonderful life she allowed us a glimpse into. For a longer, more in-depth experience of their time in the nest box, check out this video. Thank you for watching. Happy birding! The next morning, 19 days after hatching, the chickadees were still tearing up the place inside. And at around 8.54, the first fledging happened. 